Hey guys, and welcome to another episode. Today we're talking about balancing your build plate and why this is an important thing to consider, especially for those of us who have larger printers. If you're working with a build plate that's bigger than, I'm gonna say bigger than six inches, you really need to consider this because even with smaller build plates too, you still need to consider balancing, but with the bigger ones, especially when you have a larger vat, that just means you have more room for the spread. That peel force is gonna pull and so when you have pull on one side and not enough on the other, you're gonna, it's, it's, think of it as a pendulum, it's gonna swing too much in one direction. So you're gonna have either warping or you're gonna force a failure because it's gonna pull too much on one side and not enough on the other. And uh, mo most, pre most prevalent, you'll see this with uh, bases. You know, you print like a base next to like a figurine and the base will warp out the figurine. You'll have issues there where literally you either pull on it or something will happen. Um, it really depends on the size of the base, but I always recommend you build, you know, you build the figurine, and then you build the base, but there are some exceptions to that rule. We'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, for the most part, you know, balancing is important. You need to consider every factor as, as to what you're printing, where it's going to be on the build plate, how it's going to be located on the build plate, and um, the the height of it as well kind of matters too because the amount of time it's going to take to print also makes a big difference. So this particular scene I'm loading up here, this is uh, from Printed Obsession. This is the hunting party uh, and uh, this is like a giant sword there in the front and there's, there's three characters there on that side and then we have just one giant character on the other side. Now he's not actually that big. His weapon is really long which makes him a very... I'm going to call it an awkward. I'm going to call it an awkward print because it is awkward um, because his spear is at that angle or whatever. Now, Printed Obsession does offer these in pre-supports, and I do believe uh, Atlas 3D SS is, are the guys who do the supporting on these. And so, I'm not saying that they're supported wrong. They're that's that not the case. We're not actually talking about the supporting. Supporting here is actually done quite well. I will go in and and, and do some island fixing and things like that here and there, um, and maybe move some ports around for my own liking, but that is really just me. Um, I really do just prefer to hand support files anyway, so honestly, when I take a look at these sometimes, I'm like, well, I could just support them myself. But they did a good job, so I'm, I'm not gonna redo their work. The bottom line is here is though, is the way this looks, you see, you know, you're thinking, oh, this is not balanced. Like we have one character on one side, and we have four on the other, or three on the other. No, it's balanced fine, because the surface areas that are being printed as you come off the plate are actually pretty decent. The three uh, characters on the right versus the one character on the left who is off balance because of his weapon actually is causing this plate to actually be balanced in, in itself. The height of the blade also kind of helps too because it's got a lot of extra pull towards itself and that's kind of more the middle of the plate which is where I tried to align everything to. Um, now, I actually did print these. These printed great. So this balance and orientation worked fine for all of these characters. And uh, I'm actually working on a little diorama with these guys and, and the Toothy Rex. So stay tuned to our Instagram. If you guys are a fan, we will probably post some pictures of the finished painted piece once it's done. Now, in the case of just balancing, obviously, you know, you want to make sure that you have as much leaning towards the middle as you do towards the outer edge. Now, because the lance guy here on the left, his lance is pretty much all the way to the edge. So you really want to make sure that he's kind of poking into the middle. This will really allow you to make sure he's at a good angle. Now, he's actually, the way I have him there, kind of angled from corner to corner. Um, works out really well and like I said this printed great these guys actually printed with every detail just fine so that balancing is actually really good uh, so definitely look if, if you're trying to balance a bunch of characters always look to see which one is going to be the widest you know which one's going to take up the most room if they have a really long weapon if they're in a really weird stance whatever the case may be those are going to be the ones you're going to want to kind of off balance to the other ones Now this guy here, you know, this is an example of a character and a base, but his base is pretty small and he's a little wonky if you actually look at him. His, 
He's kind of this off-centered kind of character. He doesn't really kind of come up in a normal sense. But when you look at the surface areas of the base versus the surface areas that come up for his print, he actually is pretty decently balanced versus what's actually being printed on the base. The base is actually not that big. Um, and there's not a lot of surface area there that's actually happening all at once. There's pretty wide zones there, but for the most part, he's got some pretty big chunks as well that are printing up there in the beginning. So I think overall, you're, you're going to have a pretty balanced build. Now, you could probably throw an extra character in front of him on this build plate, and you wouldn't really have too much of an issue. I think your, your balancing would be fine there, as long as you oriented them fine, like you had them kind of facing each other or... Or taking up enough room, you know, that they, they were kind of like sharing the same space. I think that would be okay. Um, printing an additional base on this plate would probably work too, but you would also have to consider balancing that out with the other base. Bases tend to pull the most because they're kind of like suction cups. They do tend to pull. They have large surface areas that get printed, usually solid. And that tends to have a lot of peel force. And so that peel force that you're having there with the base is going to have a big effect on whatever you're printing next to it. And so since he's a little bit taller, I think that actually helps too. Because by the time he gets to about the biggest section of the base, he's a pretty chunky print at that point. And the supporting there is adequate enough that it's helping him kind of pull on and off. So overall, I think that's okay. Um, you can do a little bit better than that particular setup, and that was kind of an example of like, you know, oh, it's balanced, but eh, you could do better. <laughs> now, obviously, the way you want to do it is you want to balance the weight as evenly as possible, meaning you want to have a couple of pieces that are going to sit on the plate, and you want to be able to distribute that weight as much as you can evenly. Now, if you're working with a small printer, and you have a couple pieces, like these three bases, for example, you can just throw those on, and they're just, you know, you just line them up as best as possible and bing, bang, boom, there you go. You have a pretty balanced build. One in the middle, two in each corner in the back, and um, you're ready to go. Now, uh, if you're working with a big build plate, this is going to matter even more because you're probably going to want to space out as many of these guys as possible, you know, because you're probably going to mass produce them. So you're going to, you know, you're looking at make as many as possible. So you're going to want to squeeze as many of these guys as possible into the same space so in that case, really what you're going to do is just kind of like line them up in rows, get them as straight as possible, and just, you know, make it, you know, as, as, as even as possible. So that way each one will kind of print in a row. Now, it really depends on how big your build is. Now, obviously, you can you can take up as little or as, as much space as you need for each piece. You can have the, the rafts can touch each other. That's not going to really be a problem. As long as they don't obviously collide with each other, as long as these supports are far enough away that they're not going to interfere with each other and I think that's the overall thing is people you just you can be aware of uh, location you should always place your objects at least five millimeters apart it really it gives the printer enough space to kind of work with light bleed as well so you don't have light bleeding in from other objects which can cause blurring things like that loss of detail
Now I do apologize, this one took a long time to load in, but this is a really big set of objects. Um, these are all pre-supported files from Crippled God Foundry, and this is a pretty big build overall. Now, balancing this kind of stuff is generally difficult. And the pre-supported files on these assume you're printing them solid. Which for objects this large, I hate the idea of printing them solid. But let's just go for this, you know, for, for example's sake. Again, these are big, giant, like... This character here we're staring at is pretty large. Uh, I definitely would, I would probably hollow him just based on principle, the fact that he's going to waste present. The other parts, the parts of the monster or the wyvern that he's riding are huge. And uh, also, I would hollow. But as you can see, when you're dealing with a bunch of big bulky parts, there's, you know, a particular way to do it. You can balance it like this, and uh, as long as obviously the, top, the objects aren't bleeding into each other, we're good. And you can, you know, that that's uh, decent. Um, pull that back a little bit. But the honest to goodness truth here is that it's hard to balance out giant parts like this with little parts. If I was gonna do this, the perfect way it would be printing that giant chunk first then going back and printing in a bunch of smaller plates with the other objects on them the uh, wyvern objects themselves are pretty large but the character is also decently sized and the wings are pretty chunky too so overall you've got a lot of chunky parts here and i think there's a lot of potential for failures depending on the type of materials resins and printers you're using so again, balancing this is incredibly important. Um, we're dealing with, I think, of this particular, you know, on this particular printer, it's like a seven, seven to eight inch build plate. So it's not huge, but I also have to consider, okay, with this size, it does actually have some suctioning issues when you're working with big objects. So the peel force becomes a little too great, and all of a sudden you find yourself needing really heavy supports. So otherwise, it's going to snap. And this is really just due to the size of the vat versus the size of the actual uh, build and object. So when you're trying to build a tiny object in the middle of a giant build plate, sometimes it's going to fail just because of the fact that that build plate is going to lose its fight with the FEP. And it really, sometimes the chaos gods have a lot to do with that. <laughs> so we never really know. Now there's a fundamental way to do this and you, you can you can play around with this for hours where you move in the objects around the build plate and kind of adjust them and go and see which ones you know fit in the best spot, which ones like, I can put this way. We can turn this one this way. And yeah, you can change orientations, you can chain, you can you, you can rotate the objects to make them fit a little bit better. Um, there's a lot of things you can do to work with the overall, but you know, you can see the frustration of trying to balance out a lot of big objects. Again, sometimes it's better just to print them a few at a time. Uh, especially like the wings. You know, I would always recommend big objects like that. Just print one wing at a time. It also gives you less to worry about if you have a failure. That failure could lead to alternate objects failing on that plate too. So overall, you're, you're leading to more potential for failure. So I think it's important to note that just building one part at a time is kind of a good prototyping method if you're doing this for sales great that's a great way to do it if you're doing it for a hobby i think it's okay too because honestly do you really want to waste resin do you really want to waste a ton of money printing a bunch of stuff that's not going to work when you could easily just say okay i'm going to take a week print every part of this thing and it'll look perfect rather than trying to print out all of it at once unless you have a really large print build plate where you're talking you know 10 inches plus and then balancing is even more important at that point. Even more important. Because the bigger your build plate gets, the bigger the vat gets, the more the peel force is going to affect how that print actually builds off the plate. 
And the peel force is really the ultimate thing that decides whether or not your print's going to succeed or fail. The amount of peel force that's happening at each layer of each print. And when you have this many objects that are printing all at once, and you have all of this peel force happening all at the same time, that will lead to a fail. No doubt about it. And a lot of these objects are really large, so the surface areas that you're printing all at the same time are huge. You also have to make sure that you avoid areas that have suction cupping, because you definitely don't want any suction cupping happening when you're dealing with gigantic objects like this. And now don't be afraid to also go in and kind of tweak these supports as well, because even though Crippled God does do some amazing support work, I will at times add some supporting where I feel like it might be necessary. Not that it won't make the print fail or succeed, I think it's going to just protect particular details that I'm concerned about. At least in my opinion. Well, that's all we have time for today, guys. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Um, if you didn't check out the one about the hollowing and how and when we know to do it kind of thing, uh, definitely check out that. That was one of our more, more recent videos. I'll pop that up here at the end of the video so you can go ahead right to that. Um, we discussed the plate balancing thing in that video, which kind of led us to create both of these videos at the same time. So anyway, I do appreciate you guys watching. As always, please hit that subscribe. Don't forget to give the like and tap the bell notification just to make sure that you get notified on new episodes like this, which we do publish at least once or twice a week. And we, again, we really appreciate you watching. Thanks a lot. See you all soon.